A man was peeing when a snake came out of the toilet. He didn't realize it and nudged the snake in the head twice. But the snake saw feet to bite his penance. The man struggled to shake off the snake. But the viper wouldn't let go. He died in 10 levels of pain. The couple in the other restroom was also attacked by a snake. The man was bitten on the throat and the woman on the upper body. That who struggled violently. And the stewardesses outside the door teased the youth for being so enthusiastic. They would never have guessed that the people in the toilet were being beaten by snakes. The plane has been surrounded by snakes and turned into a snake pit. Every snake is attacking. When one of the snakes attacked a foot, the woman retracted her foot as if she had a premonition. Unfortunately for this woman, the snake went under her skirt and twisted around her chest. A snake snuck into Tiffany's bag. Her dog saw it and barked, but she's obsessed with socializing. When she reacted, she thought the dog wanted a snack. She reaches into the bag and pokes around. A poisonous snake was hovering near her hand. Suddenly, a neighboring passenger shrieked, and she withdrew her hand, saving her life. Electrical equipment is also infested with snakes. Crawling through the wires, they quickly disrupt the electrical system. The plane lurches violently. Smoke is billowing from the electrical bay. The captain went down to check the wiring. But just as he reboots the system, a snake hidden in the wiring flies out and bites him on the neck, sending him to the ground. The co-pilot immediately came to check on him and recorded that the captain was not breathing. There happened to be two agents on the plane. They came to the cockpit and learned it from the co-pilot that the electrical system had been severely damaged. The co-pilot wasn't sure when the plane had failed, so he was able to report to the tower and continue on his route to Los Angeles. But then the snake crawled up the dashboard. The co-pilot noticed it and flapped at it, but accidentally hit the emergency switch. Snakes hiding inside. The oxygen masks fell down and attacked the passengers. The snake flew out of a paper bag and bit her on the lips. As soon as the passenger opened her eyes, the snake bit her eyeball. Snakes are all over the plane. Everyone is screaming in terror. Agent Sean hears the noise and comes down from first class to check it out. But he's knocked to the ground by the bumps in the plane and packed by the snakes. Neville threw the snakes out of the room and used a stun gun to scare them off. But the late night flight was hit by turbulence, causing people to be thrown around. Neville sees the situation and gets up to go to the economy cabin. He stepped on the seat and yelled at everyone to watch out for the snake on the floor and run towards first class. But it took a lot of time for the passengers who were farther away to run. As they ran, they were often killed by the snakes. Those who weren't beaten ran toward first class. The slower man is pushed to the ground and cowering in pain as his ear is stomped on by a high-heeled shoe. A cobra looks around for a target and soon spots two young boys. When the boys turn around, the cobra rises up and hisses, biting him on the arm. The airman was clearing the crowd. When a ringed snake crawled in front of him, he stomped on the snake, grabbed the tail and threw it in the microwave. He turned up the heat and blew the snake's head off. Once everyone was safely in first class, Neville had everyone seal off the aisle with their luggage and quickly build a wall of separation. Tiffany, who had been knocked unconscious earlier, woke up to her dog licking her and was immediately targeted by the snakes. She reaches out and touches a dead one, then kicks her back into her seat and rushes to her seat, screaming for help. But then she looks up and sees a black snake. As it flew towards her, someone grabbed it and threw it away. The man carries Tiffany and the dog through the snake pit to safety. While everyone was resting, the stewardess suddenly heard a baby crying. Without hesitation, she peeled off her luggage and headed for the snake-infested cabin. The mother woke up and realized her baby was gone. To her horror, the flight attendant noticed a snake crawling towards the baby and hovering in front of him. The stewardess is quick to pick up the child but is still bitten by the snake. She pulled herself together and brought the woman and child back to safety. The bitten passenger needs help, but the only doctor loses his heartbeat and the snake crawls out of his mouth. In a few moments, the snake began to crawl through the duffel bag. Neville used a fire extinguisher to ward off the snakes. He gave the job to the stewardess and reported the situation to his superiors. He found a top snake expert. He grabbed the dead snakes and talked to the expert so he could prepare the appropriate serum. The snake expert receives the photos and realizes that the snakes are from all over the world. It would take at least two or three days to get this much serum. There was a stalemate. All eyes were on Neville, but the co-pilot, who was flying alone, was bitten through the arm by a snake and fell into the electrical bay. The unmanned plane careens downward out of control. The plane went into a severe tilt. The stewardess noticed the rolling gun and immediately realized something was wrong and rushed to the cockpit. She realized the co-pilot was gone. When she looked down into the electrical bay, the snake came out. As the stewardess fell to the ground in shock, the door to the electrical bay slammed shut. As she watched the snake dance and hiss, she reached for a fire axe and cut it off with a single blow. Neville went to the cockpit and worked with the crew chief to stop the plane's continued descent. But it didn't work. The plane lurched even more. A food truck crashes through the baggage bag. An army of snakes begins to close in. 
a man stands in the aisle and uses his bag to repel the snake's attack while sending everyone up the stairs. Everyone frantically scrambles up the stairs, but too many people are blocking the aisle. Those who run slowly were surrounded by the snakes and died from the bites. At that moment, a giant python appeared inside the lampshade. It slowly moves its body forward. The weight of the python crushed the glass and fell down. This causes the crowd to panic even more. People scrambled even more fiercely and collapsed the stairs. Countless people fell down. The python approached them with its bloody mouth open. Tiffany and Rich stayed on the outside. The rich grabbed the dog in Tiffany's arms and threw it at the python. The puppy was swallowed by the anaconda in an instant. But it wasn't enough, so the python wraps itself around the rich. Making his eyes red with blood, the python opens its mouth into an abyss and swallows his head whole. That's enough time for the python to digest. The group took advantage of this lull to make their way up the stairs. They block the stairway with their luggage to keep the other snakes away. But the luggage won't last long, and the snakes are about to take it over again. They come up with a new idea. They filled the valve with air and placed it flat on the stairway. This creates an enclosed space to keep the snakes out. But the tower crew, looking at the plane's direction of travel and its decreasing altitude, decided it was going down. Neville didn't give up. Instead, they pulled the stick as hard as they could. The plane was about to crash when it passed over the sea level. The co-pilot didn't die, but he was bitten unconscious for a while. He crawled out of the equipment box and was briefly bandaged by the flight attendants. Then he activated the plane's autopilot. But it was a piece of cake. With the engine damaged, the plane could only pray for mercy to make it to the airport. To make matters worse, the air conditioning stopped working after the power system was destroyed. Everyone was so hot, the oxygen masks only lasted 10 minutes. The passengers who were bitten died. If they don't die from snake bites, they'll all die from lack of oxygen. The only way out of this is to restart the breakers in the cargo hold. Neville, led by the crew chief, killed the snakes and made it to the cargo hold. The crew chief is at the top of the stairs. Neville descends into the circuit box. He crawls slowly through the narrow passageway, facing uncontrollable dangers. Luckily, he eventually finds the control switch. But the switch was jammed, and two snakes suddenly appeared behind him. Neville ignites the gas cylinder and kills the snakes. He found a crowbar and pushed the lever to restore the electrical system. The air conditioning started working. Everyone was finally able to relax. Good news from our boss on the ground. He found the snake smugglers and got the list of snakes and the serum. Everyone is cheering for a ray of hope. The stewardess calls the co-pilot with the good news, but no one answers. Neville violently opened the cockpit door and found the co-pilot dead. The cockpit was filled with poisonous snakes. Neville quickly closed the door, but there's no time to grieve, because an unmanned plane is too dangerous, and people can die at any time, so someone needed to fly the plane. Troy was recommended to fly the plane, encouraged by the crowd. Troy was hesitant to say yes, all they had to do was get rid of the snakes on the plane. Neville told everyone to buckle up and tie a rope from the life valve to the cockpit door, so they could use pressure to get rid of the snakes. When everyone was ready, Neville broke an airplane window. With the air momentarily depressurized, all lie objects were blown away. Troy opened the cockpit door as the snakes were sucked out the window. With the snakes almost gone, Neville led Troy into the cockpit. Troy was so excited that he asked Neville to turn off the autopilot and start maneuvering the plane. As the broken window got bigger, the life raft blew away. The snakes in the plane took off. Even the python was sucked out the window. But after all Troy's maneuvers, the plane was still going down. And it wasn't stabilizing at all. Neville couldn't help but wonder. Luckily, Troy's professionalism on the line allowed him to level the plane and get it to the airport. And then he started to land. When the landing gear touched the runway, Troy forgot to apply the brakes. When Neville reminded him, it was too late. The plane was sliding forward and about to hit the tower command center. Neville yelled at him to steer left. That's what brought the plane to a stop. The whole plane was rescued. Firefighters and medics were waiting. Neville and Bob shook hands and thanked him as they finally left the cabin. Just as Bob was about to get off the plane, a red snake jumped on him. Neville immediately drew his gun and shot him. His chest was red and he rolled down the life raft. Everyone was shocked and rushed to his aid. Neville didn't panic, but he went to him and ripped off his clothes to reveal his bulletproof vest. Everything was prepared. It turns out that just a week ago, Bob was riding his motorcycle in the wilderness when he accidentally stumbled upon a gangland killing. When he was running away, the gangsters found him. The next day, they tracked down his house. Bob managed to escape with the help of Agent Neville and agreed to go to hell uh, to testify against the gang. But the gangsters had secretly planted thousands of poisonous snakes on the plane they were traveling on and sprayed it with a drug that makes the snakes go crazy. When the time was set, all the snakes broke out of the crates and started the massacre. Luckily, everyone worked together and made it back to the ground safely.